So we're gonna be showing you guys at home an easy step-by-step -step guide on how to install a dildo rail. It's a dado rail. Phil's gonna talk you through the tools required for the job today. You're gonna to need a cheap little angle finder. This is an Amazon special, but it is by trend, so it's good. A pencil. This is called a chalk line. It's got chalk in it and a line, funny enough. Tape measure, little spirit level, beautiful. This one's not used, as you can see. Some kind of chop saw to cut all your angles. So where do we start, Phil? Where do we start? So, as you can see, the hallway is like any other hallway. We've got our nice flat areas, and we've also got areas like this. So as you can see, we've got a set of stairs, we've got corners, we've got angles coming up, we've got another flat area at the top, plenty going on, and we're gonna show you every single little bit of it. Let's decide what height we wanna set the rail. What we're gonna do is figure out a height. So general rule of thumb, for me anyway, personally, around a meter, because on average, your door handle's around a meter, so everything sort of flows through. But what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna make our measurement off of our skirting, because it's a lot easier, you've got different floor coverings and stuff like that, so you wanna be coming off your skirtings and your string on your stairs, which we'll show you. So I'm gonna go 900, and I'm gonna mark that everywhere from the top of the skirting on the stringer on the whole job, and then we'll pull some lines. Long stretches like this, we're gonna want two marks, one at each end and up, one at each end, so that we can pull a line. So we're gonna mark 900 here, and go up. And then we're gonna mark 900 here. And the same on all little panels, because obviously if I just do one here and one over there, we're not gonna be able to pull a line around corners, that's impossible. So what we have to do is do a 900, and we could either use our spirit level or we can just stick to the top of the skirting because they might not be level. And the reason for me marking off the skirting, which may not be level, we don't know what the floor levels are like in here, is because to your eye, everything's gonna look parallel and it's gonna look better. If you start pulling a laser through and stuff like that, you could get big, small, so now you know. Now that you've marked out all your nice little flat sections, and now we're gonna move on to the complicated section of going up the stairs, and Phil's gonna explain how to mark the staircase out. As easy as I can. All right, so some stringers have these little curves as they come up, some don't, mine does, so it comes in handy because we can explain for those that do have it. When you're marking out for this raked area that we were talking about, you wanna avoid those curves. So we're gonna get our level on the first flat section we've got, set our level to a level, get a pencil, and we're just gonna strike a line down the wall, like so, and then we're gonna do it at the other end, so however long your section is, the next flat area, and then we're gonna strike a line again, like so, and we're gonna do that on all the flat sections. Right, so anywhere where you've got turns and a rake on both ends, so we've got it going up there and we've got it going down here, we're gonna wanna put 900 mark off this corner flat. And it'll become very clear later why, because we're gonna save a lot of hard work doing this. So we're gonna turn that 900 again. Right, so now we've moved on to the second slope or rake. This one's much more clear. You can see this big, massive curve. So we wanna avoid any measurements off of that because it'll mess up our dado rail. So the first flat section in my staircase, so wherever yours is, is about here. So we're gonna put our level on there and we're gonna put another level line in, like so. And that's what you want. And we're gonna do another one at the top. Right, and now we're at the other end of the stringer on this ramp slope rake and we're going to do the same thing again as close to the top as we can put ourselves a level line in and while we're here this is another problem that you may have different heights and things this is the whole reason we're putting these lines on the flat sections it'll all become clear soon right so the last marks you want to be doing before we move on to chalk lines is those vertical lines you've put in, we need to measure up the 900 we've been doing on our flat areas. So we're gonna run our tape exactly down that mark that we've made, 
and mark 900 on that vertical line. The reason we're doing this is because if you were to measure like this, your panels would change size as they went up. Now that you guys at home have got all your marks on the wall, if we've missed anything or you struggle at any point, leave a comment. I'll be happy to reply back to any comments. If this is how he answers his comments. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs>time to get some chalk on the wall. So we're going to be doing this as a team because it's easier. So what we're going to be doing, all these marks we've got, we've got a chalk line, it's got plenty of chalk on it and we're going to be pulling it across our marks and then Brad's going to be getting out his ping finger or ping. I don't know why he was pulling it like it was going to the moon. And we're going to do that on every single section. So we're going to quickly do this one on the long wall, these little walls, the turns, up the stairs, the awkward bit. We're gonna do all of that, so follow us along. So we've done some chalk lines, obviously that one you just see us do, but we're also gonna use the level for any little bits like this. There's no point chalking that. Pull that round that corner, and then we'll chalk this one. So how do we use a string line fill? Right, they're easy to use. You put chalk in here, you just give it a good old and then we're going to pull it from mark to mark. We're going to put loads of tension in it and then we're going to go to the centre as far as you can reach. And we're just going to pull it out and let it go. And that is as easy as they are. Bush. Well, we've got a little section here that we didn't mention before. So we've got this tiny little drop here and it's rounded and it's all stupid. So what we've done, we've pulled our 900 line there and our 900 line there that we did before. And all we're going to do is get our level and you're going to decide where you want it to go down. So roughly on the corner, you, this is up to you. So this is where you think the corner should be. So I'm going to say there. We're going to set our level, which is there. And we've got a little mark there. And then the same again on the bottom. So you can see where these two intersect. So I'm going to come off of that. Set our level up. So that's all level. Off that corner. Another mark there. And all you've got to do once you've got this is connect these two up here. So you can either do that with a level if it's small, which as is, or you can pull the lines again with your chalk. But we're just going to go like this, point to point. And that there, then mirrors the step up, if you've got one. Okay. So we're going to repeat the process, just like Phil showed you on this section. We're going to run it just along there on that flat bit of skirting, and then we're going to angle it up after. A little bit different, though. You're going to be going past your marks on all of these on the stairs. And the reason we're going to be doing that is because it's going to give us our junctions. Because obviously we, this is not where it connects. This is just our level lines at the minute. Right, so as you can see, I've overrun our string, our chalk line. So Brad's going to ping that and it'll all become clear. Boing. Right, so now that we've string lined these two marks, we overrun it and that's what creates this important part and this is what gives you the angle when you're running your dildo rail up the stairs. Say do row, God's sake. <laughs> so on that little corner that we showed you earlier, we're going to just use our level and put two level lines in here. Oh my God, there's level there. And remember, we're going to be marking longer than we need on everything because we want that intersection of everything. So it's easy to follow. Same again on that side. Like that. Now if you've got a window, you can either return it back into your window. I'm not going to be doing that, I'm not a fan of it. We're actually going to be doing a return on here and we'll show you that when we get to it. And now we're going to pull in the big long one down the staircase, or your staircase if you're doing it at the same time. So this is the most important one, the long one that everyone's been waiting for. Right, don't forget overrun that. So we're going to overrun our marks like we have on everything else. So Brad's on his mark. Oh, I've got to run that a bit further. Brad, you ready? You ready? Yeah? Yep. Right, so we're nice and tight. And then all I'm going to do is a quick ping 
and you should be left with a nice straight line like so and if like me you've done your level line shy like a silly billy it happens to the best of us all we're going to do is put our level back up and extend our line until it intersects with the other line we've done and these are what we want these little intersections let's go and do the top landing One of the last ones now, so we're getting ready to do some real work and get right on this boring bit. But this is super important. This is the bit that makes your job. So pay attention to this bit. Make sure you follow all the steps and the little tips we give you and you're gonna end up with a mint job. Right, so our first piece we're gonna be doing is a nice, simple, straight little piece. So all you're gonna do is measure from end to end we have got 624 millimetres because we're in the UK and that's what we use. Right, so now we've got our timber, our dildo rail, dado rail on our saw. We've transferred our mark over. Always remember, put your blade on the waist side because you'll lose the thickness of the blade, which is about three to four mil. Let's go. So now that you've cut your first piece, we're going to install it. So we're going to be installing as we go, just to make your life a little bit easier. We're going to be using sticks like, <coughs> and that is not a joke, that is the actual name of this stuff. Quite good, but you can use any grab adhesive. So all we're going to do is lay it on the back. Like so, give it a wiggly wiggly. Everyone knows if you don't wiggle it, it won't work. Oh, disgusting. And then we're just going to stick it into place. Uh, like so. And we are going to be bringing that to our marks. Like that. And what we're also going to be doing is putting some pins. Because as you can see, the walls are not fantastic. This has got a slight bow in it, which you'll find when you come near the ends of walls. We've got a pin gun, but don't worry, you don't need one of these. If you just get some panel pins and a hammer, put your panel pins in, but leave the top sticking out, just to allow this to dry. Once this sets off, it won't go anywhere. You can pull them back out, and you're golden. Oh, like so. So let's get this on. Come onto a section that's actually longer than our dado rail, so now we're actually going to have to put a join in, and Phil's going to show you how. Like that, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so when we're joining the longer pieces, you can butt join them if you want to, but we prefer not to. So, what we're going to be doing is putting a 45 degree angle on the end here, like so, and we're going to be putting the same on this, and that gives us a little bit more surface area. Another thing to take in mind when you're doing this, think about where you want your joints. So we're going to be putting it down here because it's behind the door as you walk in. So you've got less likely to catch your eye on it. Let's go over to the saw cut. Okay. So now we're going to cut our 45. And remember, when you're using your saw, don't cross arms like this. Do this, it's much safer. Right, so now you've got your 45 degree on here, you're going to measure your next piece. So the easiest way to do that is come from the flat edge here, so we're going up to that pipe, that's as far as we can go, to the furthest point on here, which is 706 millimetres. So 706 millimetres, let's go to the saw. So now you've brought me to the saw, the easiest way to do these, we've left the uh, bevel exactly where it was, and we've cut one on that side, and then we're going to cut the next one on this side. That's going to give you your two opposites. So we're going to bring our saw down, we're going to cut this first. Remember, be careful, you don't want to lose your fingers. Yoink. And then we're going to measure from the longest point on here, like so. Hook that over. 706, which is our measurement which was there, and then we'll put a little mark, 
and we're now going to tip the bevel back up to zero and we're going to cut remember to always put the blade on the waist side so that's what that little mark is to remind me bring our saw down Hopefully it fits. Let's go. Right, so now you've got your two opposite 45 degrees like I explained on the saw. Just double check that it's going to fit. So we put it in there and we slide the little fitting in. A little cut. And it should line up all perfect. And if it's a good cut, normally it holds itself. So good. So to stick this in, exactly like the rest. Only difference is we want to grab ourselves a little bit of wood glue and just put it on the end like so easily peasily grab our grab adhesive <sighs> grab, grab adhesive give it a wiggly wiggly remember no straight lines it won't work if you do that that's the law and then we're going to go to our chalk lines that we've been doing slide it into place and what we should get is a nice crisp join take your time make sure that's good before you go moving on so all good, and then at that point, you want to put yourself either a panel pin or grab yourself a pin gun, shoot that in. Now, a little bit of sand in there, a little bit of filling, that'll be invisible, okay? Next. Right, so now we've shown you how to do joins in your straight runs that are over the length of your wood. How to apply it to the wall, we're now going to show you how to do external miters. So, this is where the angle finder comes in. This is an Amazon job. It's made by Trend and it's not super expensive. So we're going to push it onto the wall like so. So making sure it's flat on both of the walls. And we're going to lock that off while holding it tight. And we have got 136.7, so we're going to round that up to 137. Right, so now that you've got your angle, some people make the mistake of dividing that by two. That is not how you cut these. What you need to do is start with 180 degrees. You minus your angle, as is 137, or that's as close to. We're going to then take the 43 that it comes to. We're going to divide it by two, and that is going to give us 21.5. That is our cut angle. That's our mitre. Right, now you've done all your boring angles and all the boring bit that no one wants to hear. You're going to take a scrap or a piece that's similar to the size you need, and what we're going to do, the easiest way to do this, is to hold it in position on your line, take a pencil and we're going to mark the corner like so, and then we're going to mark the direction of cut like that. For someone that does it all the time, they don't need to do that, but for me and you, so we can remember when we get to the saw, that's going to help us. Let's go! Right, so now we're going to transfer that angle that we worked out earlier, as is 21.5, onto our saw. So we're going to roll through 21 and then halfway, that's 0.5, lock the saw off. And we're going to put the blade again on the scrap side. Little tip for people that's not very familiar with the saw, you can work your way into your cut. So start out here, cut, work it in until you get right on that point at the back there. Right, test fit your piece, make sure it looks right, it's sitting on that line, the bead, the corner, whatever you want to call it. And now we're going to do the exact same process with this piece here. Join them up, lovely. So we're going to put the piece we've already cut, leave that there for a second. We're going to mark the next piece that's going to join it. So again, mark the corner and then mark the direction we want to cut. Right, so if you've done all your calculations, you've used your angle finder correctly, this is what you want. Tiny little airline there, but we are not bothered about that. He's plenty good. And now we're just going to stick all this on. Remember to put your wood glue on here. Pin it in. Any switches or sockets, do not pin into there because the chances are you've got cables running either up or down. So bear that in mind. Right, so now we've done the glue again. Slide that in. And we're just going to manipulate this to the line, obviously. Give it a little wiggly wiggly. Oh. There we go, that's what we're looking for, nice tight join. Right, so we're going to pin it in. Beautiful. We'll do all the way along and then we'll move on to the complicated stuff, okay?
Right, so now we're going to be moving on to the awkward section, which is the stairs. I say it's awkward, you'll be all right, you'll live. So we're going to need our angle finder again, and now this is where all these lines become important. So all you need to do is place your angle finder on your lines, like so, and make sure it's perfectly on the line. Lock it off like we did before. And then that is your angle. So on this one, we've got 134. Now you can go around and do that on all of them. So you've got all your measurements, all your angles. And another thing we want to cover, we're changing the way we cut now, okay? So we've shown you external wires, which was cut like this on the length of it or the width. Now we're going to be cutting across the face for these ones here, like that. So we're going to be cutting across the face to get these angles, which we'll show you on the saw again. So we're going to work out all our angles, we're going to write them all on the wall, and then we'll do our calculations. We've worked out the angle here, and it works out the same equation. So you take 136 away from 180, divide that by 2, and that gives you 22 degrees. Right, so now we've moved on to the awkward stair section, the part you've all been dreading. So a quick tip before we start marking anything out, if you come to your angles, this is the bottom, isn't it? So we're going to pull an imaginary line in the middle of the angle. So we'll come to the middle, roughly there. The reason I've done that is to make your life easier, because some people, if they're not familiar with this sort of thing, it can become very confusing when you're marking your angles. So that's our mark there, isn't it? That's our junction. So we're going to put a line there. And now we know we want to cut this way because we've got that line up there. So we're just going to mark the face like that. So when you get to the saw, you're not going to get confused. You know I need to cut that way and the blade needs to be on that side in the waist. Let's go cut it. So we're back from the saw, 23 degrees, 23 degrees in opposite directions, using that as a guide to tell us what way to mark it. And as you can see, we're on our line and we're back up to our next junction. And that is also 23 degrees in our case. So we're gonna mark again that little junction there where that line is. And then we're, oh, there's our line. So we know we need to cut this one that direction. Right, so to make this clear, those little lines that I've made up here to help you understand the direction of cut you wanna make, imagine that is a straight cut, yeah? So if I stand like that, 90 degrees, be there somewhere probably. And if we put that back, that line is far on the left side of this, so we need to cut in that direction away from this mark. A lot's going on, but I hope that's clear. We want to go left, and if that line was on the right hand side like it was this side, we'd cut that way. Now that Brad's got these perfect angles in, it's time to move on to an internal corner. So most people cut 245s and it never ends up perfect. There's a little trick to this, and it's called scribing. Right, so I'm gonna try and show you guys at home how to do an internal scrub. So what you do is, you butt a full piece up in the corner, like so, with no cut on it. And then you wanna grab another piece that's going into the next section, and you wanna put a 45 degree angle on it, away from the corner, like so. So I'm going to let Phil cope this back because he needs a bit of practice. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> All we've done, we've put the 45 on, and what that's give us is a guide of where we're going to use our coping saw to cut. So we're going to follow that white line all the way around. You can back cut this slightly, and it gives you a better fit. So no matter what angle that corner's at, this will fit to a degree. Bear with us for the long run. This is a long one, so we'll speed it up. Right, as soon as you've done your scrub, it should look a little bit like this. Beautiful. And then you just simply slide it over your other piece, like so. That's what you'll end up with. And then we move on to the next one. Right, so one of the last of the tips we're going to be giving you in this, one of the tricky bits, is when you come to something where you're going to terminate your dado rail and that is like this one here, so we're just gonna be ending it here, we're not gonna turn it back. 
So all you have to do is get your piece, we're going to pop it into the corner like we did down on that bottom joint and we're going to mark the corner like so, like this, so that's where it's going to finish and we're going to cut it back at 45 degrees. So I'll go and do that and I'll see you in a second. Right, so now you've done your 45 back, that's what you should be end up, end up with. And what you want to do then is cut the opposite 45 off of a scrap. So see how I've done there? I've cut the opposite direction and we want to keep this tiny little piece. And what that does is that sits on the end there like so. All nice and neat and fancy. And when that goes on there, it gives you a nice little detail rather than a rough raw edge. 